CNBC TV18 had reported on September 6th that the insurance regulator was considering mandating that all insurance policies be dematerialized. On the 7th of September, we told you that the mandate has indeed come through. Let's now dive deeper and look at the big beneficiaries of this move and the cost involved for insurance companies. Let's spend a minute to look at what this dematerialization move really means. All new policies issued from December 2022 will have to be compulsorily issued in a DMAT form. And by December 2023, all old or existing policies will have to be brought on the DMAT platform. Many relate this move to the dematerialization of shares. The move would mean converting physical insurance policies into modifiable online policy. Insurance policies will be put on a separate DMAT platform called the EIA or the Electronic Insurance Account. This EIA will have all policies belonging to an individual like his life insurance, health insurance or motor insurance policy. What does it mean for policyholders? Since all policies belonging to an individual will be in one account, servicing these policies can be done all at once rather than reaching out to individual insurance companies. Dematerialization will remove paperwork and physical policies. Finally, policyholders will be able to take loan against their insurance policies just like they do against shares. Now, let's get to the meat of this story. Who benefits? Well, in long run, this will benefit insurance companies, but the depositories are uh, the ones who enable this process and they will be the big beneficiaries. NSDL, CDSL, CAMS, Carvi are the big depositories analysts are focused on. My calculation suggests that the depositories here could have an opportunity to double their revenue. Why do I say that? Life insurance industry sold around 3 crore policies in FI22 and the cost of dematerializing a single policy estimated by insurance companies and industry experts is around 50 to 60 rupees per policy. That would give depositories an additional revenue of about 150 to 180 crore rupees. General insurance companies, they sold 50 crore policies last year. The same calculation on dematerialization cost will give depositories an additional revenue of 2500 to 3000 crore rupees. Finally, the old active life insurance policies will also have to be dematerialized. There are 30 crore life insurance policies and dematerialization of these policies will bring revenues of about 1500 to 1800 crore rupees. All put together, there could be additional revenue of around 4150 to 4980 crore rupees for the depositories. Compare this to the current revenue which depositories make. NSDL's revenue in FI22 stood at 821 crore, CDSL's revenue stood at 606 crore, and CAMS was about 927 crore. A very, very conservative estimate would show that these depositories could easily double their revenue. Now, insurance dematerialization will certainly entail a cost for insurance companies. This right here is a breakup of the annual recurring cost and the one-time cost which big insurance, both life and general, will have to take towards dematerialization. On the positive side, insurance companies will save the printing and the delivery of physical policies. Dematerialization will also restrict frauds. Also, it will improve the renewal ratios and hence the persistency for these insurance companies.